Hello, and welcome back to another episode of The Single Season. In this podcast, we help our single ladies to navigate the sometimes treacherous waters of the dating scene. I am so elated to have a very special guest, so I'm just going to turn it over to her so she can do a very special introduction. Hey, you guys. Very nice to meet you. Uh, well, I say meet you like we ain't, we ain't did this already. Uh-huh. But anyways, my name is Samaya. I'm the host of Not Just Another Sex Podcast, and I'm also a hands-on sexual educator. Yes, so. yes. And we've seen your content, and we absolutely <laughs> love it. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. If you are struggling in your sex life personally or with your partner, Samaya is the person you need to connect with. But we're going to get to all of that absolutely. when it's time, because I've checked out the content. I'm now a member of the Patreon. I'm getting it together for my husband because we cannot lose steam. So I'm so thankful that you could be on the show today. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. I'm so proud of you. I mean, you know, we're doing some things. We're doing some things. We're doing some things. What is is it? We do grown women? Yes, yes, yes. We're doing some things. So (laughs) today we're talking about vulnerability and intimacy during someone's single season. And so I am sure that a lot of your audience, they're not necessarily in committed relationships and they're kind of struggling with basically when to give it up that's real right that's absolutely when, real. like when do you balance giving it up when you went how do you know like maybe i need to go back a step and deal with the exes i don't want to add bodies onto my list mm. all of that kind of complicated stuff because we are sexual beings but at the same time there's a lot of um shame that's attached to single women because we want that fulfillment absolutely. at the same time it's you got too many bodies and you a hoe and you were this, right? So as someone who's in the industry, what are some of the conversations that are being had in regards to single women and sexuality? So I think that everything you said is already just like a, a great point. And a lot of people don't don't really address that head on. Um, for me, this is actually something that I've been going through recently. I have not been in a committed relationship for a couple of years now. Mm. And so even with my following, they've just been like, you know, Samaya, what's up? Like, are you are you approved now? Or you haven't given us any juicy stories or things like that. I have juicy stories. It's just right now I'm in a season of having sex with myself. Mm. You know, um, I would love to have like sex with someone else. But at the same time, it has been... It's very difficult when I'm being when I'm getting exactly what I want. Mm. So, for example, in the past, like a lot of my content where I'm talking about different things that I've, I've experienced, they're coming from a moment where I got to try certain things and and got to be outside like threesomes, orgies, like let's let you know what I'm saying. Let's try these different toys, things like that. And I absolutely want to do those things again. Mm -hmm. But I have also grown as a woman personally, who I am as a mother, like the things that I desire are different. Mm. And so I want to have that same type of sex. But I had to be honest with myself and say the fulfillment that I'm missing is to also have that deep, intimate connection with the person that Mm -hmm. I do these next things with. Mm -hmm. So... I do believe that people have to be honest with themselves and ask, what exactly are you looking for? Because if you're just looking for someone to warm your bed so that way you can feel, um, you know, like have that that physical touch or um, to get intimate in that way with another person, you have to ask yourself, are you going to try to make that a relationship? Mm -hmm. Because I can have sexual chemistry with someone. I've had sex, don't get me wrong, but... I also wasn't trying to make that a relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, and a Mm -hmm. lot of people have great sex with someone or have great sexual chemistry and then they try to make it something that it's not. Mm -hmm. But then on the other hand, when you do find that fuck buddy or whatever it is, a lot of times you you end up having sex with someone that doesn't actually respect your decision Mm -hmm. to be able to have casual sex with them. That's why it's so hard to find it, which is why a lot of women will end up going back to an ex or going having sex with someone that they kind of can have a relationship with or whatever. I am a very honest person. Mm. If all we're doing is going to have sex, you still have to respect me. We have to have a great time together, but we can both know that this isn't going anywhere. It's something that we both choose to do. We're either focused on ourselves right now, but we can fulfill each other in an intimate way and we can have a great time when we do that. Like we may decide to link up once or twice a month and we watch some movies and eat some food and have a great time, play some games and let there be intimate energy Mm -hmm. and us exchange, me exchanging my feminine intimate energy energy with your masculine energy because we both have needs that that want to be fulfilled Mm -hmm. without you saying that like I'm a hoe or like Mm -hmm. you thinking like oh well you loose well I wouldn't date you anyway there's not one person that I've had sex with that would not date me in real life Mm -hmm. 
But can we be honest about the fact that is that really what it is? Right. You know what I mean? Right, right, so right, right. I think a lot of people are always trying to make something something that it's not mm -hmm. because either they're embarrassed or either they're having sex with someone that doesn't really approve of you just having sex with them. OK, so now can we take it a step back? Absolutely. So I know that you are an, an expert in your field. And so your um, awareness of your desires and how you can position yourself sexually in relationships are probably on a higher level, the highest level in comparison to the average woman. Can the average woman have casual sex? Because what the rumor is in society is that we get attached immediately. If a woman gives a man access, it's because he must be special and she's into him. Does that exist? Does casual ex sex exist for women? I think casual sex can exist for women, but also if you don't know your own body, if you don't know your own pussy, if you don't know what it do, if you think that a man is better at sex than you, then it's going to change how you think of them. You putting them on a pedestal instead mm -hmm. of putting yourself on a pedestal. I'm a person, there is not, nobody can make this pussy talk the way that I make this pussy talk. Mm -hmm. So it's harder for me to get obsessed or, you know what I mean, get all in my head and create these fairy tale stories over a guy because at the end of the day, it's a different form of intimacy that I'm choosing to have with another person. Mm -hmm. My suggestion to these women is to, Impress yourself first, mm -hmm. and then you'll be surprised what you want from someone else. You'll be able to say, oh, this is just something that I need physically. Mm -hmm. But also, a lot of people don't have their spiritual routines down. Like, their spiritual insurance ain't paid. They don't know how to just be by themselves and say, this is not that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. are, are you going to tell the truth? You, do you know what you want before somebody else is in the picture? Okay. Do you okay. know what you want with somebody else is in the picture? Then when that person gets in the picture, are you able to be objective and say, like, Okay, sexually here, we do have this chemistry, da 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 But if you don't, then you don't. But at the end of the day, it's absolutely possible, but a lot of people, they, they're they ready to settle. Mm -hmm. We are so ready to settle. Like, we, enthusiastically ready to settle. Yes, yes, you know? yes, yes. And so it just depends on where you are. Mm -hmm. And for me, I have amazing sex by myself, so it doesn't make me thirsty for dick. Understood. So, so, but now let me tell you, I already see the pushback. I already see the comments is going to say, well, she ain't have it from me. She ain't let me hit. If she would have let me hit, she said she know how to let her pussy. But I, mm. so what do you, <laughs> right? That, that, that's, I can, I can already envision it. So what do you say to women who say, I don't know how to make my pussy talk. I don't know what moves, like how do they learn? Yeah. They're going to get into Patreon. Right. You but. Know. So I have this don't class. Teach, don't teach too, too much. I got you. I got you. All so right. I have this class. It's called Masturbation and Squirting 101. Mm -hmm. And it's a really good basis for multiple things. It's a great, even if you know how, to, if you, even if you've had an orgasm before, it's a great place to start because it teaches you the extent of how to really incorporate masturbation and mm -hmm. all different types of things. Masturbation is a great tool to learn how to strengthen your orgasms and elongate them as well. Mm -hmm. So like you can have a five minute orgasm, you know, like mm -hmm. you can, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> most women are not even using all the settings that come on that pussy. Like, mm. they're not doing, you know, they're not having multiple orgasms. Mm -hmm. And so you haven't even felt the best type of orgasm that you could possibly have. But even in postpartum, or if it's just a desire thing, like, oh, I don't get wet the same, or things like that, this is a really great tool that can be used before sex starts. Mm -hmm. Like, at the end of the day, having sex with a partner, you're not going to be able to just do everything right away. So mm -hmm. having three or four orgasms before you have sex with your partner is going to amp that level of sex up because now your like your vaginal walls are going to be more engorged. They're going to be more gushy. They're already going to have, you know, like more more like fluid. Texture. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Because you've already had three or four orgasms. Sometimes you know, everybody pussy don't talk the same. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't um it doesn't let go of the same fluids in the same manner. Sometimes you need two or three orgasms. But also um to your point about, you know, People saying that, like, well, you've never had sex with me or you don't know, things like that. I can know that I want to have sex with somebody and also be honest about you and I don't have enough sexual chemistry for the the session to be amazing enough. Mm -hmm. If you talking to somebody, period, it's because you envision yourself having sex with them. Mm -hmm. If I'm talking to you, it's because I absolutely am rooting for you to to, to hit this pussy. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm rooting for Eventually. you. Eventually. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But just because I'm attracted to you doesn't mean that you have created arousal for me. Yes. And even if I'm aroused, I'm on, it's only going to be good if you actually desire it. Mm -hmm. There is a lot of lust that's involved in it. And like, we try not to say that like good sex doesn't have lust in it. That's just temporary. No, like everybody want a little lust. You want your husband to be like, yo, I saw you on that show. Bring your ass over here. Uh -huh, like you uh -huh. are, you know, everybody want a little, you know? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And so I think that 
a lot of people think that just having sex with someone that you want to have sex with is enough. Mm -hmm. I know I want to have sex with you, but have we actually created the environment? Can we actually be comfortable enough to say we absolutely want to have sex with each other, but we really need to set the vibe so that way it's a session. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like men, they dicks be getting soft during sex as well yeah. because you're not, they're not really aroused either. You know? Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So, can we just pivot a little bit For in sure. regards to that for men? So I know that a lot of your viewers are women, but I do know for a fact that you have a significant male following. Sure. So what are some of the techniques or strategies or conversations that you have that are targeted towards men? I teach men to have the same boundaries that I teach my girls. You know, and I say that because it's usually women that's looking for some good dick. Mm -hmm. It's harder for us to find good dick. So when we find good dick attached to a great man, mm -hmm. you're you're a prize at it's the over. end of the day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's over. So don't stick your dick in everything. That gives you more power. And if you only take scavenger pussy, which means that like you just always accidentally have sex, then how is a woman really catering to you? Is she really sucking your dick for, or is she sucking your dick and in the same song still on when she done? Mm -hmm. Like, are you getting what you deserve like for your body? Can you get a woman to to do the things that you really desire in the bedroom or do you always feel like you got to take it whenever she offers it mm -hmm. that's that's i don't i don't like easy men mm -hmm. you know what i mean like mm -hmm. because it's just like it's given like you don't even know that you a hot commodity mm -hmm. you know and so i tell them the same things it definitely with boundaries but also making sure they they get into toys and i say that because i'm not a, a body cannot replace a toy mm -hmm. period they're two different feelings but Whoever gives the orgasm, that's who gets credit for the orgasm. So if you use a toy on me and I'm sitting there or whatever, in my mind, my mind is saying that he gave me that orgasm. I'm not like, oh, that was the rose, mm -hmm. not you. No. And most men aren't doing it. So you already set yourself apart. Like yes. she's going to be going up the walls crazy for you. Like you're going to get more trust from her because you're not intimidated by her pleasure and all the things that it can unlock. Mm -hmm. But also, you know, that if you can't last six rounds back to back or if you like, oh, well, if you suck it again, I can do it again. I did my work at the top, mm -hmm. like, <laughs> right. and then you went for two minutes and you like, oh, if you suck me again, I'll get it there. That's not fair. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like now I like to enjoy the pleasure, which is why I don't like 69 too much. I ain't gonna lie to you. Mm -hmm. But if I did all I these like that's things, childish. I feel like that was what we was doing in our twenties. 69 is cute, but it's uncomfortable. It looks attractive. But at the end of the day, I want to, I want to be able to relax. I'm had a long fucking day. Why are you eating my pussy? I don't want to have to think about sucking dick and doing it well. Mm -hmm. Like I don't. Mm -hmm. So somebody going to give up. Like, if somebody gonna I'm, stop. Uh, uh, I'm be like, oh, it feels so good. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't like doing that. Mm -hmm. But I tell them all the time, like, use toys because you can be thorough. Mm -hmm. How you do one thing is how you do everything. Make sure that she's good before you even stick your dick in. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's just going to put you ahead of the curve. So the same classes that women are taking for their pussy, men, you should be taking the exact same classes. Mm -hmm. Know how to do shit to her pussy that she don't even know how to do. Mm -hmm. That's re really why women be going crazy now. Y'all stick y'all dick in, and she's like, I don't know how to make myself feel that way. So they always need a man. They always need a man. They always need to have sex. Mm -hmm. And if you know how to work her pussy better than her, then you got the cheat code. Got it. But use your powers for good. Yes. Good. Your powers for good. <laughs> so speaking of the word power, I was just about to ask you, you know that there's that expression that says pussy is power or pussy mm -hmm. is powerful. How do you interpret that? What does that mean to you? It depends. I think that pussy is power only matters to somebody that sees pussy, puts pussy on a pedestal. Mm -hmm. And I guess at this age and at this place, I'm not, I don't really have sex with men that are phased by pussy at this point. Mm -hmm. So I guess it depends on what love you. I think that's a very, like a mind game type thing. And I'm past that. I'm not, a lot of, I think a lot of people think that like, oh, somebody is easy to like get over on because she's so kind or things like that. I give you enough trust until you, till you break it. Mm -hmm. um, which means that I treat you with respect. I'm very honest with you. Like I actually don't play mind games, but also when you try me in another way, I, I correct it right there. My boundaries are very, very strong. Mm -hmm. So that's exactly why if you see me, you'd be like, oh, you used to have sex with him? Like, he treating you like, like, I literally have fuck buddies that have come in town, like, from the past. And it's like, oh, I'm doing this. I got you a ticket so you can see this or whatever. Like, they treat me with love because I treat them with love. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think respect is power. I think boundaries is power. I don't think it's the pussy. I think boundaries mm -hmm. is power. Because mm -hmm. at the end of the day, men don't respect, don't value the same things that we value. Mm -hmm. Men value, like, like you said, power. What you let someone do and not do to you is really where the power is. And that's not really in the pussy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's mm -hmm. really in everything else. And I've also found that a lot of men think that, like, when it comes to women, as long as he got money, as long as he look a certain way, as long as he educated a certain point, they like, you would date any of these niggas as long as they got that. They want to feel special. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So they also don't respect anything they haven't earned. 
They just don't. Mm. It's just not, they're not routed like that. That's not what they respect because they feel like if they didn't earn it, you'll give it to somebody else like mm. that because they didn't earn I'm it. I'm thinking that's universal, I, right? Mm, women women aren't really like that. They think that's something is special. If, you, if, 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 if a man has sex with you, they're like, oh, well, he likes me because he did da-da-da-da-da. Our values really? are different. I, I mean, she has to be a foolish woman, I would you, imagine. No, but you're no, thinking no that shade. she's special if you get that dick hard. At the end of the day, it's an ego thing. That's mm. also why women get so upset when men don't come during a, during yes, a, they during a sex. They take yes. it very personal yes, because yes. They, they're... It's an ego boost for women. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? So what we value is different. And mm -hmm. so I feel like boundaries is is bigger, is a is more powerful than pussy. Mm-hmm. You right. know? That because you can because I can engage with you and we can have a great time and we've never had sex. Like it's it's gonna take a while to get in these draws. Understood. Understood. You know? So I'm thinking about my ladies who have had one or two partners in their entire lives. Mm -hmm. um, maybe for religious reasons, maybe they got married young, whatever that looks like. Now they're older, now they're separated, divorced. Mm -hmm. What kind of advice or guidance do you give to your older listeners? Honestly, I have so many women that are like in their 40s or divorced or like on this new sexual exploration thing. Yes. And I always start them with that masturbation and squirting class as well. And mm -hmm. I say that because again, they're learning how their pussy works by themselves. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's different for them. If you've been locked into having the same type of sex, you could be in a loving relationship and be locked into a certain type of sex. Like, if we be honest, most of us gonna get on our back, we're gonna get bent over, or the legs is gonna go back. Like, I get it, we're very busy people, but at the same time, learning how to speak up for your sexuality, that's another part. If you don't have the tools, then speaking up is gonna be difficult because yes. when people are listening, you don't know what to say. Yes. You know what I'm saying? So mm -hmm. I'm teaching them like, hey, this toy does this, this is, and then it's also teaching you how to incorporate that masturbation with a partner. Mm -hmm. So the level, your level of confidence changes. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? When you know how your body works. Like, I can't talk to you about dating and be like, well, you don't know what you're talking about. If you're certified, you know that your shit is backed up, right? right, right That's right. a level of confidence. And it sure is. It absolutely uh -huh. is. So like, there's a level of confidence that comes with that. Mm -hmm. When you take that masturbation and squirting masterclass, you're really getting certified on your own pussy. So mm -hmm. can't nobody tell you shit about your shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So you could speak up. You can also recognize when someone is interested in your pussy or they're interested in you mm -hmm. because what your pussy takes now like they're not willing to do any of the things mm -hmm. it's making it very clear that y'all not on the same page like it's so much power in knowing your own pussy right like seriously so that's really where a lot of the ladies start um they also start um with accountability with me i'm really big on that um and a lot of times women are like well i've never had this type of orgasm or my pussy doesn't do this or doesn't get wet the same and we can learn all the tricks in the book, but if you're fucking the wrong person, baby, you're fucking the wrong person. Mm -hmm. And there's a level of accountability that goes in with that. I can't fix a problem that's just broken. So what you do know? you mean by wrong person? If you're having sex with somebody that doesn't encourage you, if you're having sex, if you're with the wrong person in life, mm -hmm. your body is not going to respond that uh -huh. way because at the end of the day, you're not comfortable. Mm -hmm. You're making yourself fit somewhere where you don't belong. So I can teach you all. The, I can teach you how to suck a dick from here to Canada. OK, mm -hmm. but at the end of the day, if you suck in the wrong dick, you're not going to want to do it. Understood. You're trying to figure out how, why you can't show up in your sex life the way that you want to because your body don't want to be there. Right. You're unhappy in the romantic relationship. You're unhappy or yes. for whatever reason. But also there are so many women that are with the man of their, their dreams. They love them so much, but they still, they don't know why they don't want to have sex. Mm -hmm. And also when you violate your own consent by having sex when you don't want to, mm -hmm. it's not going to help the sex. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think that most people have bad sex because they're choosing to have sex when they really don't feel like it. Mm -hmm. Think about it. When you married and you love your husband, if he asks you for some pussy, all you want to do is say yes. Yes. Because he deserves it. Right, right. Right. But what do you do when he deserves it, but for some reason, you really don't feel like it? You don't even know how to have that conversation. Baby, it's not you. I desire to want to be able to desire you, mm -hmm. but I don't even know how to get into it. I re I'm sorry. I don't know how to suck dick enthusiastically. I'll do it because you deserve it. Mm -hmm. That's not enough. That's See, not enough. Men, men love to be desired. Mm -hmm. you, if you if you if you have a little boy out there, you know that they love compliments and they blush just as much and and they need just as much love as little girls. Mm -hmm. Grown men ain't no different. Mm -hmm. So when you don't do things to their body like with enthusiasm, yes. it changes things. And you keep having sex with him mm -hmm. knowing that you're only doing it because he deserves it. Right. And you think you're doing him a favor, but you can feel that. Just like you can feel when somebody, before they eat your pussy, if they take a deep breath, you're like, oh, babe, can you, can you give me some head? And they're like, okay. 
Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if they do it. It doesn't matter if they do it the best. You already uncomfortable and insecure because you saw from their body language it's not really something that they wanted to do. Yep. There are so many women that are married that's like, I had to take a, sh- I got to take a shot before I have sex with my husband. And you think that he don't notice, but he's having to choose between getting, needing to get a release and not wanting to cheat on you, mm-hmm. but also knowing that deep down it doesn't necessarily feel like you're comfortable, but this is all y'all know. Mm-hmm. Having intimate and real conversations is another thing that older women or women that have been married for a long time come to me for because they're like, how do I not lose my man and also tell the truth? Right. So women violate their own bodies in consensual situations every single day because they feel like this man deserves this pussy. You're right. You know? Right. So, Understood. So um, a sensitive topic mm-hmm. around hygiene Ooh, that's right. is starting to be had more publicly. <laughs> yeah. And so we want some tips. What are some of the uh, cleansing practices that you advise your clients, your audience, so that these ladies and gentlemen are showing up as their physical best self in the bedroom. Right. So first things first, everything that com- goes in your body is going to come out. So make sure that you drink enough water and things like that. Like, it sounds really simple, but I know that I be so busy sometimes. Mm-hmm. I didn't pick up a drink of water or eat all day, just mm-hmm. like being on set, right? So it doesn't mean that you dirty or nasty. It means that you're busy and you need to remember yourself first, right? But second, when it comes to, like, your cleaning products, I know that there are some doctors that are like, well, you don't need any extra soap or products or anything. You just need warm water or whatever. I'm sorry, this is not warm water pussy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. I work out. I be moving around. Like, I don't like a little musk. I'm sorry. I don't. Um, so for me, I use, like, feminine soap. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And it's very light. Like, it's so light that you can actually use it on your face. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You can also use it on children. You know? Like, it's a great product to go, like, when your daughter starts her period. Or, like, even for you. And I like it because it already combats the things that give women yeast infections mm-hmm. and BV. So a lot of women, they'll take medicine, like, over-the-counter medicine, and then they'll end up getting like BV or a yes. yeast infection yes. um, or their own period will get them, give them a yeast infection. Mm-hmm. I, um, I have a product through like sexual essentials, my first company Good. and it's a Yoni wash and a Yoni oil. Mm-hmm. And those are two that I suggest people to use all the time. Like you just put a little bit on your finger mm-hmm. and like, just kind of like finger it kind of through your lips and things like that. And your natural discharge will get rid of the extra. Mm-hmm. And so like that has stopped yeast infections in their tracks for me. Like if I even feel a little bit of a, mm-hmm. a little itch or something mm-hmm. like that, I put that on and it's gone like by the next, Next day, mm-hmm. but also like for your period, a lot of women their period stinks. Mm-hmm. Like let's talk about it. Like mm-hmm. especially if you're not using all natural products or a cup, which a lot of women don't feel comfortable using yet. Mm-hmm. So they'll use their that tampon still and things like that. Putting that yoni oil on the tampon, you'll have your period and you won't smell anything. Like even when you're changing, like you're you know yes. doing your cleansing practices and things like that. And then the last thing is that your partner should be using the same soap on their genitals that you use on your genitals. Mm-hmm. You know. Mm-hmm. So also making sure that you're cleaning properly. You do not put soap actually in the vaginal canal, right? Mm -hmm. It should be going through the lips and the labias and and things like that. And then also for some women, like, hair hold smell. That was so, my next question. Yeah, hair hold hair smell. Hair or no hair? What's I'm a the no position? hair girly, but because like you could take all that shit. I would not, I would not be mad. Long, give me put to take it and put it on my edges. Yes, okay. Uh-huh. Um <laughs> put it there. But uh-huh. for me, it's like I don't like hair because it can hold smell. If you sweat, you're gonna you're gonna get muskier or whatever mm-hmm. faster. But don't get me wrong, like pussy has a smell. So like y'all, you can't clean away the smell of pussy. Just make sure that it's clean pussy like right. it's, pussy still smell like pussy right there's just degrees of it's it. pheromones like right. and honestly after you masturbate you should use your little pussy juice and like rub it right here and then go around your man and see how he at mm. we are absolutely animalistic creatures yes. so like a little little dab dab right here and right here just watch i like but, that you know for your man don't be going around with your coochie juices out in public <laughs> around here right <man>. please <laughs> please 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 so I know that there are some people who may be a little afraid to have sex with themselves mm-hmm. or sex outside of the institution of marriage, especially some of our ladies who would identify as religious. So what kind of advice do you give to women who would say that they are religious beings and so masturbation or sex outside of marriage is just something that they don't want to do or are afraid to do? What are your thoughts around that? Well, at the end of the day, when it comes to masturbation, I'm going to talk about them separately. So masturbation is one thing, and then how you choose to embark on sex with somebody else is another thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't understand anything. I'm just very confused around there being laws around my body. Mm -hmm. So you lost me with that one. You know what I'm saying? So if you listen to this, I have no advice for you. At the end of the day, it's your body and anything telling you to deny your body in one minute and saying that it's only worthy for someone else to touch it. 
no matter what you believe, you don't follow everything the religion says. It's not to knock anybody at their religion, but your ears probably pierce. You might curse. You might mm-hmm. do different things. So don't pick and choose what you want to decide. At the end of the day, I, I am a spiritual woman, but mm-hmm. also I have a faith in God for sure. Like, yes. absolutely. But I also believe in multiple things. And more than anything, I believe in my body, my pleasure, and me feeling the most comfortable in that first. Because the only person that has to walk this life is me. Mm-hmm. Right? Um so there's that. You're going to have to take that how you will and get into that slowly. Right. Um, but feeling uncomfortable in your body is a real thing, you know, and we shame in, in religion. And like and I grew up in the church, we shame women to be uncomfortable. And then all of a sudden they're supposed to get married and pop out these babies. Yep. And it's like we're what, the natural progression. Where, there's none at all. Mm-hmm. So there's that um, when it comes to having sex before marriage, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm going to have to test out that car before before we drive off the lot. Mm-hmm. Like I, you would not buy a car without testing it. I'm not encouraging you to have sex before marriage, but I will say that I followed the steps. I did not move in um, back in the day, was married. I didn't, we did not move in until after we were married. Mm-hmm. And I was, I was big on it. I was like, no, I'm not moving in with anybody until I get married. Ask me now, and I wouldn't move in with everybody, but if we're talking about doing this forever, we need to live together first because I'm very clear that that marriage would have never happened had we possibly lived together for a year before. Really? Absolutely. What was it in living together for X amount of time would have given you insight that you didn't have before? Well, at the end of the day, no matter what, if you don't spend every day, wake up and go to sleep next to someone and you're there around when they're having their mood swings or when they're like, when they see you and your natural element or like, like I found out that like I'm on the, I'm on the spectrum for ADHD. Like mm-hmm. those kind of things, you might find out that this person annoys you when you're around them for too long. Mm-hmm. Like you can like somebody and still know that I don't need to see them two days in a row. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. when you're dating, there's a balance between that. Even if you spend it every night together, they're going somewhere else and then you're coming somewhere else. There's a level of excitement to it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But when that honeymoon phase wears off, do you like me? Mm-hmm. Do you like all of who I am? Because mm-hmm. when I hang around my girls, they know all my flaws and all that shit. And I be thinking that they don't see it. And they're like, girl, we know exactly who you are. And I'm like, oh, you guys just like me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I was married to a man for six years and he did not like me. He mm-hmm. did not enjoy me. He did not like me in my bad phases. It annoyed him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's not that he didn't love me, but at the end of the day, some people are just not your people to do every single thing with. Mm-hmm. And if we had lived together even for six months before the marriage, we would have both figured that out. And mm-hmm. that's okay. So I feel the same way when it comes to sexual. So if we're talking about having sex before marriage, what is our contingency plan if it doesn't go well? Because mm-hmm. there are a lot of women that have wrote, written articles and they're like, I waited to have sex talk till I had, got married and it was terrible. I didn't have an orgasm. Like, how do I have these conversations now? If we're going to wait until we get married, what is the contingency plan for if that shit sucked? Mm-hmm. And also have the have the conversation. The guy should be like, hey, if it sucked, tell me. Mm-hmm. Don't fake with me. Right, like, right, right. But we take everybody else's pleasure personally. Yes. And that's really a big problem. In marriage, it's just like, oh, it's supposed to be this because I'm the love of your life. People married to the love of their life having the most subpar sex all day, every day. But it's fixable. It's absolutely fixable. Like, mm-hmm. people cheat. I do this. I literally do this because people cheat and they fuck up relationships because they're trying to validate the fact that I do fucking love you, but I am a sexual being and I have desires. Mm-hmm. At the end of the day, sexual repression only breeds perversion. Mm-hmm. So if you don't let me let it out, mm-hmm. even if you don't orgasm now, you're going to orgasm in your sleep. Mm-hmm. Men gonna have a wet dream if they don't let it out. It's a physical thing. But in comparison to your marriage, it always gets pushed to the back burner where like sex isn't everything, but it's something. And mm-hmm. if we're not having it good, it's gonna push people to look for it in other places. Mm-hmm. So I do this because people are with the love of their lives and their sex is not the best sex they've ever had. Right. It's not. And mm-hmm. if you are taking your your partner's pleasure personally, then you're never gonna be able to get over those humps. Like mm-hmm. people be <laughs> Men be with women that they fucking love. Like, mm-hmm. they love their dirty-ass drawers. And the head be bap, the the pussy be dry, mm-hmm. and all kind of shit. But he love her dirty-ass fucking drawers. And I've watched those type of women be honest. Like, no, I got to work on giving bay head. And it's that desire to be better that mm-hmm. makes those men melt for those women. Mm-hmm. That's like, no, I got to do better about this. Or bae. Like, I went to this class, da-da-da. You could be the worst dick-sucker in the world. But you tell your nigga that you went to a dick-sucking class because I'm trying to be better, babe. Yes, like, yes. he going to eat the fuck out of your pussy and bend you over. Because it's like, yeah. you 
I want to do a dick sucking class for, for me. me. Yeah. Like, and even just being able to be honest takes away a lot of the need to hide or anything like that. Like when you can be honest and say, "Hey, you know, you came quick. I wasn't done." Like, and we can joke about that and say, "You right. Go get the toy." I just I felt bad. I I feel awkward asking for the toy when it's not right there. So can we like put it right here next to the bed? Like, remember that this needs to be your friend. Mm -hmm. You know. Yes. Don't don't expect your partner to start lying just because they with you now. Like that's a that's a long life to live, not really being your honest self, and you live with a person. Mm -hmm. like let your let your partner be a person that makes sense you I know? love that talk to us about the difference between sex and intimacy I feel mm. like intimacy is a word that's used like as a replacement because people don't want to say the word sex but sex yeah. intimacy what's the difference so for me I can be dating someone and they will be a um, a non-sexual partner mm -hmm. which means that we kiss and we touch and we rub and we breathe together. I know it's like, bitch, you're talking about breathing together. Well, tantric sex starts with a lot of breathing and feeling the energy moving through your body and things like that. Sex is sex. It's an act. It's oral sex or it's intercourse. Mm -hmm. It's that particular thing. But intimacy really is what we're talking about when we're talking about foreplay and how we cook together or me walking around in these thigh high socks and mm -hmm. you just looking at me in a certain way. Like there's a level of intimacy. You laying with me. And when you go out with your boys at night and you come home and all you want to do is lay next to me it's not really that you wanted to fuck mm -hmm. like you might want that but you also want to lay next to somebody that makes you feel good that smell good like being up under my like mm. feminine energy and things like that like people need to be able to explore I need I need to be able to explore intimacy with you before we have sex because a lot of people are not comfortable in sitting in intimacy mm -hmm. they only know how to have sex and a lot of people are having sex more than what they, their body truly desires because yes. what they really need is intimacy. What you really need is to make out with your man. But mm -hmm. you know that y'all don't really kiss like that unless y'all having sex. Mm -hmm. So now you're trying to have sex. When your body wasn't ready for sex, it was ready for kissing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, I can be honest about that. And if we be honest about it, a lot of men feel that way. A lot of men desire intimacy. but They, they desire a girl to wash their beard in the shower and just rub on them and rub their face and just, you know, like baby them. I know I love to be baby them mm -hmm, spoiled, but, mm -hmm. you know, if y'all can calm down and not say that everything that a man do is sassy, yeah. you might realize that what he really wants is some intimacy from hey you. Now. But if he always got to put in work because you know you only ride for three seconds, mm -hmm. then you're not getting the intimacy. You got any classes for that? Absolutely. Dick riding one-on-one as well. You going to fix my knees? I got got you. I got I you. Making knees. I had knee surgery and I I ride like and I used to be way bigger than this. Mm -hmm. And I'm talking about no issues. Like I'm telling you the class is everything. I'm, you know what? I'm going to send you the link. Send me your email and I'm going to send you. No, I'm a paying customer. Have... <laughs> I, I, I'm paying. I, I told you I joined the Patreon last night. Okay. And so I'm paying okay. my money. Well, this is, well, right now it's a good time because we have all three of my master classes. You can get them for the price of one because we're actually reshooting them. So mm -hmm. all of that content, I'm just selling it for the price of one master class. It's the mouth master class, the dick riding one-on-one -on -one class, and the masturbation and squirting class. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's really good information. It's a really good basis because a lot of people aren't teaching people how to do it. Like you on the dick, and like you look good, you baby, you, baby, you fine, mm -hmm. you fine. But that dick sure only fine. moving in and out like this because you your body not actually lifting up on the dick, and so you think that it's so good that that's why he throwing you off and taking over because oh he was about to nut no baby because you're not doing nothing. Mm. You chair scooting, which is good for your G spot. Andrew, you got something to tell me? You know. <laughs> Babe, look that's at me. How, that's what's a, going on, babe? That sounds familiar, up. Lord Father. I thought I was you, doing something. Think about it. When he stroke you, you know how like they tease you and it go in and mm -hmm. it's like, oh, like you tease, like put that, give me, give me all seven inches, right. you know? They don't want you to just tease them the whole time either, where it's like he's going in and all they feel is like this part going up and down. No, bring your pussy all the way up to them lips where you could feel the head going in. Think about like when they first go in and you go, mm. like keep doing that over and over. And like let your, let your, if you can go up just a little bit more, six, six, seven inches, mm. right? We say it ain't that big. If it ain't that big, then why your ass can't get up off mm. of it? So get up off that six, seven inches and let your pussy lips like just play with the tip of his dick. Like mm. now it just feel like, you know what it'll feel like? Mm. It'll feel like your lips like sucking on the tip. I that feel like sense. good head and good sex feel interchangeable. If you mm -hmm. suck in the dick right and if you are using your pussy right, he's not going to know, is this pussy, is this hands, is this the Gawk Gawk 3000? Like, mm -hmm. what are you doing if you use it all correctly? But, like, for me, that that's the part that's power. Right. Pussy itself is not power. But pussy that know how to get what she wants, that knows how to bring herself to orgasm. Mm -hmm. Like, between all three of those classes, what I love is that you can drive the boat by yourself, which mm -hmm. means that you can get y'all both aroused. You can get y'all both like ready and do the foreplay by yourself. Mm -hmm. And you can get on top and take control, drive the boat. And at the end of the day, he can make you a sandwich. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Like, That's right. show him some love. Cause at the end of the day, sex is really hard. Mm -hmm. It's really hard. And like, ain't nobody teaching them how to do it either. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, and then they well, have porn. to. 
Point point is not it. That's yeah, not that's not. I knew you was gonna about. say that, but no, I just wanted to throw it in. You want to make sure that we yeah. hit it. I feel that. That's that's good. Bring it all together. I feel like when when it comes to men, because people call and stuff that they do sassy and things like that, you want him to hit your G spot, but he needs to roll his hips to do G spot. But you saying that he do that and he's sassy. Mm -hmm. Now you wonder why you can't get the the optimal performance. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So like, man, this is a word. Move your hips. Mm -hmm. Grind into the pussy. Why? Because the hip, the pussy is curved. On the inside. Mm -hmm. Your dick most likely straight. Why do you think women going crazy for a curved dick? Because yeah. once he stick it in, it's right there at the G spot. And you're like, mm -hmm. do that face again? <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Did the camera get that? Did you get it? Yes. All right. I, I love it. So yes. as we wrap up, can you tell us where to find you? Where are the classes? Who needs it? Give us everything, because I'm signing up for everything. Absolutely. It's the accent for me. Absolutely. Um, again, my name is Samaya. I'm the host of Not Just Another Sex Podcast, as well as the owner of Sexual Essentials. And you can go to my podcast page, um, Not Just Another Sex Podcast. And if you click the link in any of my bios, you'll see all of my stuff. Um, TheSexualEssentials.com has my master classes, that yes. three-for-one special is in the link in my bio. And then also my Patreon. So my Patreon is like $15 a month, but it has over 300 classes, workshops, and hands-on demonstrations. So, like, there's even um, some demonstrations of some women that donated their pussy to science. To mm. me, it's not porn. I'm fully clothed, but I hired a videographer and got um, really close up, and I demonstrated how to do certain things from the masturbation and squirting class because so many women were like, well, this don't work, da-da-da-da-da. You know how when you tell your clients to do something, you could tell that they didn't do it? Absolutely. I could tell from what you're telling me that you did not do what I asked you to do. Mm -hmm. You jumped ahead and did the thing that you wanted to do. You're yes. trying to get to the end where I'm teaching you how to deep throat, but you missed all the stuff before that, and you're trying to wonder why something isn't different. Yep. I'm there to teach you how to change your mindset so you don't have to learn how to have good sex. Good sex just come from you. Mm -hmm. You know, so like with the um, with the Patreon, we have different discussions. We have bonus segments. We have classes that teach you how to do different things. So you don't have to stay on top of your sex life. You can just stay a part of the Patreon and then I'm giving you the homework. I'm giving you the orgasm challenges. I'm giving you the conversations to have. I'm giving you the guest people. We're doing, it's different bondage. Like it teach you how to how to do rope play, like three beginner rope play things. There's mm -hmm. different things on there, like different toys to incorporate. It's so much stuff that you don't even have to think. You could just like, guys, y'all could sign up and the next thing you know, she's like, you changing, you change. You don't even got to tell her nothing. You signed up for this and you like, damn, how you getting into that? Mm -hmm. Like, you all you need to do is find, like you said, hire an expert, find somebody else that will put it at the forefront. Yes. As soon as you join, at the end of the day, you're a part of the community. And now you have the community to ask these questions, talk about these things. And then we take requests and everything. It's a community that encourages your sexual wellness and being in an honest place, you know, so make sure you tap in with me. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much for being a guest. We appreciate you. This Absolutely. was so insightful. It was good. You hit me with the rapid fire. I was like, she is in there. She is ready. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, yeah. My husband. I'm coming home. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So as we close, I just hope that you guys were able to take away something that I took away, which is you have to do something different to get a different result. So if you are not pleased in your sex life, even if you are absolutely single, single as a dollar bill, or you are in a committed relationship and you want to show up just a little bit better, you got to do something different to get a different result. That is another episode of The Single Season. I am your host, Allison Wellington, and I hope to see you next time. Peace.